Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. There's a game for everyone out there, but some games seem almost tailor-made for specific people. So this week, I decided it was best if we brought in an expert. Allow me to introduce you to this week's host, our own video game senpai, Raina Scully. Thanks, Julian. I'll take it from here. Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. Uh, I already did that part. Julian, I'm the host this week. Welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Raina. End of intro. Like men, there are a lot of dating games to choose from, but one in particular has my heart. The game is Hatoful Boyfriend, a game where you're a typical Japanese student attending a prestigious academy for pigeons. Yes, this is a game about dating pigeons, because Japan. To be clear, you do not play as a pigeon in Hatoful Boyfriend. You play as your normal, everyday Japanese schoolgirl who lives in a cave and hunts for her own food, as all Japanese schoolgirls do. But unlike most people except for Nikola Tesla, all your love interests are birds. Stock photos of birds. Don't take the easy route and flip on that setting that shows a human avatar when you meet the new birds. Embrace the weirdness. Once you get past your shallowness and start to appreciate the birds for their personalities, the game really takes flight. A playthrough only takes about an hour, but the love interests are compelling enough that by the time your third term has flown by, you find yourself really caring for them. Except for Shu. That dude is creepy. It's pretty impressive that a game can take us from scoffing at the thought of dating pigeons to wanting to spend our entire lives with a hot young fledgling with gray plumage. What happened inside my brain in the last hour that caused such a dramatic change? In a word, love. In several words, a chemical cocktail that makes you form strong emotional bonds. One of the most important chemicals in your brain love stew is dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter associated with reward and is what makes you feel happy and good inside. Dopamine's like a doggy treat for your brain. Do something it likes and it gives you a little treat. Pass a math test, get a treat. Win a race, get a treat. Do hardcore drugs, get a treat. Hey, I didn't say what your brain likes and what society deems acceptable are one and the same. A huge part of why people become addicted to drugs like cocaine and heroin is because their brains reward them every time they do it. In fact, looking at the brains of people in love shows that drugs and love have some similarities. They both affect the same two dopamine-sensitive regions most heavily. Those regions are the striatum, which is associated with pleasure, and the insula, which is associated with assigning value to pleasurable activities. To experience the feeling of love, it's important the two regions are activated together. For example, when researchers showed subjects pictures of their loved ones, the striatum and insula both activated. But when researchers showed them, shall we say, adult images, only the pleasure center was activated while the insula was not. Love versus lust. Anyway, the fact that drugs and love both activate the striatum and insula could explain why people in love exhibit addictive behaviors that would be worrisome if we didn't consider love to be a good thing. Behaviors like obsessing over their partner and wanting to spend as much time with them as possible, or if they love is unrequited, behaviors like stalking and murdering. Okay, maybe in some cases love is a bad thing and you should attend some sort of love rehab because you might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Love could be a hard habit to kick though because while you're in love, your brain will keep rewarding you with dopamine. One study of couples who had been married for decades found that the dopamine-rich areas of their brains behaved similarly to those of couples who were in the passionate throes of young love. Of course, young love feels different than new love. When you first fall for somebody, they seem to be flawless, perfect in every way. This stage of love is known as limerence, also known as the honeymoon stage and is short-lived. Maybe after years, we build up a tolerance and can't sustain the high. Or maybe, as some psychologists think, humans need that early stage of limerence to keep them invested until they figure out if there's long-term potential. That's why I like that a playthrough of Hatoful Boyfriend only takes an hour. I'm still in limerence with my chosen bird friend, but we never have to get more serious and move into a love nest. So dopamine is a big part of where the feeling of love comes from, but it's not the only chemical in that saucy love stew. Another is the hormone and neurotransmitter oxytocin. Oxytocin is associated with forming strong bonds with your partner and is sometimes called the love hormone. Oxytocin levels rise whenever we make physical contact with our partner, like when we hug, kiss, and especially after an orgasm. I can say that because biology, YouTube. Just like how I can talk about tits and boobies because those are birds. Vasopressin is the final major ingredient in your brain's simmering, steamy love stew, and it's another chemical your brain releases after making the beast with four wings. It's associated with long-term commitment to a partner and has been studied in animals that form lasting bonds with a single partner, like penguins, swans, and prairie voles. In one study, scientists blocked the effects of vasopressin in male prairie voles and found that they quickly lost their devotion to their partner and allowed other male suitors to take their women. Yes, these hormones are present in animals too. Whether or not they feel romantic love is a tricky question since you can't exactly ask your dog if he really loves you or if he's just in it to hump your leg. 
One study found that when dogs stare into their owner's eyes, their brains flood with oxytocin. You could take that as evidence that our pets truly do love us, so really, the idea of romantic love with a pigeon isn't too far-fetched. Does that count as a bird pun, or is mixing video games not allowed? It's my first time on this channel. I don't know your rules. Nailed it. Anyway, if you want to feel all these lovey-dovey emotions and maybe a little weird about interspecies romance in under an hour, check out Hatoful Boyfriend. So we can love non-human creatures, but do we really actually need them? For the answer, check out our video on Pikmin here. Make sure to subscribe for more and don't forget to keep on playing. And now for a list of bird names that sound inappropriate but are very, very real. Coot, Gamecock, Fulvis-breasted Woodpecker, Red-billed Oxpecker, European Shag, Common Shag, Hoary Puffleg, Barn Swallow, Dick Sissel, Andean Cock of the Rock, Tawny Frogmouth, Bush Tit, Blue Tit,